This is from a story called Falling in October, because it's October, and I don't know about you, but I feel like everything's falling. <laughs> Diana Levine parks in her carport in the savage flats of Hollywood. Los Angeles is a ruined fishing village. It's a resort outpost in the dark ages. There are only lateral movements. It's a tropical nightmare. There is the torn green of the palms and, eventually, the monotony of the carbon cycle. It is October and we are falling, Diana thinks. We are falling in and out of love without warning. We are asking strangers to marry us. The rain is falling like green bullets or the accelerating glass we have been waiting for, bullets, bombs, and earthquakes. We are falling to the ground, through the earth itself, into debt and disaster. We are small and defective, and the walls of our cities are falling, our satellites are falling, chunks of metal from the lesions of the sky, from our illusionary channels of communication. We have nothing to say, and the metal is a kind of rain, and we are falling off the wagon, we are falling down drunk, we are falling down stunned, we are falling from grace, we are falling in October, and they can't catch us all. We are falling because there is no more gravity, the laws of the universe no longer apply, we are like leaves, only smaller, it is our season to come apart. In the unpunctuated dark, we are trembling violently. We are alone. We even have our babies alone like contaminated animals. We barely manage not to eat them. Baboons seem sophisticated. Compared to the complexity of primate social interactions, with behaviors of affection and tolerance, we are primitive. We possess a grief so encompassing to admit it would require immediate suicide. We raise these infants alone. We teach them to love with their teeth. We teach them to make Molotov cocktails and face the tanks. You can put that one in the bank. In between, we make terrifying promises. He says, abandon yourself to the possibilities. She removes her skin. In between, we stand in the new lover's bathroom. His necessities are displayed. The beast cannot possibly be this nasty or need this many products to contain it. We learn more about him by opening cabinets than he will ever tell us. He needs toothpaste, dental floss, plaque remover, razors, and acid tablets, fiber laxatives, deep heating lotion, cold sore gel, sterile pads, hair dye, acne cream. There are more shelves, but we've seen enough. We're dizzy. There is absolutely no way we're going to buy into this. Six months later, we test negative. We celebrate by going to hotels and meeting in lofts and delirious combinations and afternoons without edges. We know it is forbidden, but we can't help ourselves. We are enacting Haitian rituals and reciting Tibetan prayers. Some of us are sober. We are going to AA. We carry lucky charms and sig nines with lasers. We are desperate. We keep candles lit because we are becoming afraid of the dark. In between, we sin, we transgress. We always thought there should be a punishment for what we do with our bodies. We always thought we should be put to death for this. Now, some of us are. And we can't believe we've done it again. And we don't know if we can stop on a consistent basis. We grew up in the 60s. There was nothing penicillin couldn't cure. 
in between, we call the paramedics, were having convulsions and heart attacks, putting fantastic mixtures of powders and potions into our noses, lungs, and veins. We are staging garish infidelities where we sweat and moan and heave and pant and silently count to 10,000 and no one gets off. We just don't want to be taken alive. In between, we walk out of motels, close the door, saying, that never happened. We wake up in a cold sweat, wondering if last Saturday night is actually going to kill us. We have to wait six months for the next blood test. We spend it at home alone with the door locked. We have to keep ourselves in. Then, we are racing to airports, throwing bricks through windows, getting into limos and company jets, river rafts and horse-drawn cabs. We are kissing in the broken glass. We are taking the psychiatric medication. We are taking the 12-foot waves. We are stepping over dispossessed to get into private clothes clubs where we throw off our shoes, pull out splinters without missing a beat, the moon is russet, the air is red. We are rushing each other with scissors and knives. We are having the time of our life.